Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And I swear this is my last Vampire the Masquerade video for a while. But I had to talk about the worst crime in the vampire world. Diablerie. It has some really awesome benefits, but some terrible consequences if it goes wrong. If you enjoy videos about vampires, werewolves, and fantasy creatures, maybe subscribe. I upload every week. And thanks for all the support you guys have been showing the channel recently. And hello to all the new subscribers, happy to have you. Also, a quick shout out to some of the amazing artists that have allowed me to use their work. SEI SMK on Ko-Fi. Amazing work. They've done almost every race of VTM and has commissions available if you're interested. And Nathan. I was doing research and came across this. A perfect piece of art to depict Diablerie. I will have their information in the description if you want to check them out. And of course, I can't forget Green Ratto. And I have a little surprise for you guys. Leave your Instagram or Twitter at below in the comments and I will pick one of you to win a commission done by Ratto paid for by me. I'll wait a week and then I'll contact the winner. It will be a half body with a simple background. Good luck to everybody that enters. Before we get into the masquerade's most serious crime, I have an awesome announcement. I am officially Lord Kogan Lawlands thanks to established titles. I'm really happy to have them sponsor a video on the channel because I love their product. Take part in the historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords, ladies in English. The title pack they offer gives you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Eddleston, Scotland with an official certificate and crest. And of course, the best part, you can officially change your name to Lord or Lady and even get it on your credit card, plane tickets, and more. You can also surprise someone with a lordship and it makes an awesome gift. Who wouldn't want to be a Lord or Lady? You can check your unique plot number and see exactly where your land is located. And the first 200 people that use my link will have land within walking distance of mine. So if we band together, we can make our own utopia where people that like Twilight aren't allowed in. Only kidding. Possibly the best part about established titles is that for every order they plant a tree. And work with global charities, one tree planted, and trees for the future. So you're getting something awesome and supporting a good cause that helps plant trees all over the world and protect Scotland's beautiful landscape. My grandmother and a lot of my family were born in Scotland, so I really like being able to help in some way keep the country my family came from beautiful. And right now, Established Titles is running a big Labor Day sale. Plus, you can use my code to get an additional 10% off. So don't wait. Go to establishedtitles.com slash Kogan or click my link in the description or pinned comment and get your gifts now and help support the channel. Thanks again to Established Titles for being a sponsor. Vampires live by their own set of rules, but if they want to avoid problems with their kind, they should follow the masquerade. It's basically a set of rules to keep vampires safe so they don't have to deal with another inquisition. The rules are pretty simple. Don't show any signs of your vampiric powers in front of mortals. You can steal, kill, feed, but don't get caught. There is another crime that can be committed among vampires though, and it's considered much worse. Diablerie, sometimes called amaranth. What is Diablerie? Let me explain. Sometimes a vampire decides to feed on vampire blood because it has increased benefits and a better taste. The older the vampire, the sweeter the vitae. But when you drink a vampire's blood, it creates a blood bond. You will become attracted to them, fall in love with them. And after drinking from a vampire three times, you will do anything they ask. So feeding on a vampire can be beneficial, but comes with side effects. Some clans enforce blood bonds for loyalty, while others reject them outright. Diablerie is when a vampire feeds on vampire blood, also known as vitae, but they take it one step further and drain them completely dry. This act is looked down on by almost all vampires and is akin to cannibalism among kindred. Draining a mortal dry is no big deal, they just die. But when you drain a vampire completely dry, you take more than just their unlife. You take their essence, their soul. Within a vampire's body, they have normal vitae, but they also have something called heart's blood, which is a thick black substance and this actually contains their soul. Some kindred have even found ways of preserving this heart's blood so the victim can be diablerized later. The Asimites even use this heart's blood in some of their path of blood rituals. It's said when a vampire commits diablerie, those who can sense auras can see stains and veins of darkness. After committing diablerie, this dark aura will persist for a year. But if the Diablerist's generation was lower than their victim, this dark aura will last years equal to the difference in generation, which could be hundreds of years. After a vampire commits Diablerie, 
they must gain control of the new heart blood in their system, or they can begin to hear the person in their head and might even act like them. It's possible for a vampire's body to be completely taken over by the soul of the vampire they diablerize. This is why it's not only frowned upon, but dangerous. It's said that this is possibly how some of the original antediluvians lived on. In the tabletop game, it can take a while to diablerize a vampire, sometimes a whole scene. This is because vampire blood, also known as vitae, is much thicker than human blood, so it can take some time to actually completely drain a kindred. Some groups like the Azamites and Sabbat encourage this type of behavior. The Anarchs are mostly against this savage act, but if someone commits Diablery and the Camarilla finds out, they can issue what's called a blood hunt. This means every vampire under the Camarilla will kill you on sight. It would be like when John Wick gets a hit put out on him and then every assassin is trying to kill him. So if your body and soul can be taken over, and it's one of the worst crimes a vampire can commit, why would a kindred want to risk committing diablery? Well, of course, it does have some benefits, or no one would do it. For one, a vampire can lower their generation, putting them closer to the first vampire, thereby making them stronger. If you are a ninth generation vampire, and you diablerize an eighth generation vampire, you will now be an eighth generation vampire. You can even gain skills and disciplines, aka supernatural abilities, that the kindred possessed. You don't want to attempt to diablerize a kindred that is too much stronger than you though. It could lower your generation faster, but the stronger the kindred, the higher the risk of a piece of their soul taking over your own. Say if a 10th generation kindred tried to diablerize a 4th generation, even if they managed to succeed, the much stronger 4th generation would surely take over the body of the much weaker vampire. I talked about the thin blood in my last video, which you should check out if you haven't. But they are vampires of such a low generation, they don't even show traits of a specific clan, and cannot use any of the 17 disciplines that full kindred have. However, it is actually possible for a thin blood to commit diablery and become a full-fledged vampire. Something I find interesting is that if a thin blood commits diablery on a bruja, they would become a 13th generation bruja and take on the appropriate traits. But if they commit diablery on a ventru, they could become a ventru so they could essentially pick what clan they want to join. In my opinion, Thinbloods have some of the most to gain from Diablery. The Bruja clan has an early history with Diablery. The original antediluvian or founder named Bruja was Diablerized by his kin, Troil, who went on to start the Bruja. Troil was a fourth generation kindred, not a true antediluvian, but he is now referred to as one because by committing Diablery on his maker, he became an antediluvian, or third generation vampire. The strongest in existence since the second generation made up of three kindred was killed off. So technically, a vampire could not raise themselves any higher than the third generation, unless they committed diablery on the first ever vampire, Cain. And that's pretty unlikely considering it said he was so powerful he could invent new supernatural abilities on the spot, and prevent any vampire around him from using their abilities. There is a kind of prophecy known as Gehenna, written about in the Book of Nod. It's like a vampire apocalypse that sees the return of the first vampire Cain to kill all of his descendants. But it also foretells the return of the Bruja leader that was diablerized. This story says that instead of being diablerized by his childer, he used his mastery of the discipline Temporas to transport himself through time. In modern day, there are groups of Bruja that refer to themselves as true Bruja because they still possess the discipline Temporas, which the original Bruja had. This allows them to manipulate time. One of the other clans well known for Diablery is the Tremere, extremely loyal to the Camarilla and have deadly skill with blood sorcery. I briefly explained in my other video that the Tremere did not become vampires like every other clan. Instead, they did it through magic and diablery. They were a group of arcane mages with a leader named Tremere. For a long time, these mages managed to live extended lives using immortality potions, but they were beginning to fail. This sparked the mages to start looking into alternative methods, and then a member named Goratrix suggested vampires might be their answer. Using some vampires, he performed a ritual on Tremere himself and his six closest men. Upon completion of the ritual, they all fell unconscious and awoke as kindred. This meant they had lost their arcane magic since undead cannot perform magic. 
Most of the mages probably would have killed Goratrix for this mistake, but surprisingly the leader Tremir said that they will learn the power of their new form, and so they left their chantries to study their new gifts in secret. Eventually, Goratrix even found a way to turn other kindred species into something called gargoyles through blood sorcery rituals. They are not a Tremere bloodline, but are mostly controlled by the Tremere. Their only powers, or discipline, were the ones given to them through blood sorcery rituals, but have since evolved to have their own discipline called Viseratica. I probably butchered that, but this ability is similar to protein because it involves shapeshifting but is more defense-oriented. Other kindred could possibly learn this discipline, but the gargoyles won't share their secrets. Eventually, the Tremere came upon the knowledge of Cain, the Antediluvians, and Diablerie. Looking to cement themselves as a respected vampire clan, Tremere knew he needed to Diablerize an Antediluvian, and so he decided on Saulot, the founder of the Sullabri, Cain's most beloved childer, and healers of kindred. Tremere and his inner council found Saulot's tomb in the Anatolian desert and diablerized him. Just like when the Tremere became kindred, this diablerie had some positives, but also some negatives. They were now considered an official lower clan, welcomed into vampire society, but were also considered diablerists and usurpers who just murdered a fellow antediluvian, so some kindred had mixed feelings. But at the same time, no one dare challenge them. The Tremere continued to hunt the Celebri, accusing them of being soul stealers and painting a smear campaign. By the 15th century, the Celebri were almost hunted to extinction and were considered nothing more than a legend, but the Tremere were a fully respected clan. The Celebri have actually returned as a playable race in recent years though. That's my video on Diablerie, Vampire Cannibalism. I was originally going to include this in my video about the 14 clans, but I couldn't find anywhere to naturally fit it in, and I kind of felt like it was such a cool topic it deserved its own video. Would you commit Diablerie? Risk losing your body for the chance of becoming much stronger? Personally, I don't think I would risk it. If there's any movies, TV shows, or video games you want me to cover, leave them in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and maybe hit that subscribe button if you haven't. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.